Hi, everybody. I'm John Fenzel. Um, you know, as, as a lot of you saw, Siri and I were able to attend the Medal of Honor Convention's Patriot Dinner last night, and it got me thinking about somebody who is no longer with us and who you've probably never heard about, but I know some of you have, especially our Marines. His, his name was Smedley Butler, and his, his story is just really fascinating. S Smedley was born in Westchester, Pennsylvania. He was raised there, went to school there, but uh, all the while he was more interested in fighting for his country. So uh, he, he went off, he managed to get a direct commission as a second lieutenant in the Marine Corps. And once he finished basic training, he, he deployed to the Philippines where he, he fought in the Philippine-American uh, War. He and his Marines performed so well. Um, uh, he went on to fight in, the, in Honduras and in Panama and, and Nicaragua. And then during the, the Mexican Revolution, he was inserted into Mexico and posed undercover as a, as a railroad executive to, um, to report on the developing situation there. And, and uh, when, the, when the situation continued to worsen, he and his Marines landed at Veracruz where he earned um, the Medal of Honor. And, uh, you know, it's interesting, he didn't stop there. The, the following year, Smedley led his Marines to Haiti. And after a, a revolution in Port-au-Prince um, threw the, the country into chaos, uh, Smedley and, and his Marines fought a number of battles with the with the with the Haitian rebels and and that's where he received his second medal of honor so in doing so he became one of only two marines to 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 uh, earn the medal twice and um the other one uh, of course was uh, far better known uh, uh, Dan Daly um Anyway, during, during World War I, Smedley was promoted to colonel and, and he was given command of the 13th Marine Regiment in France and he was promoted to Brigadier General shortly after that. So numerous command tours, um, a, a nearly unprecedented uh, two medals of honor, promotion to Brigadier General, and then he was promoted to, to Major General, two stars. So that should be enough to complete anybody's story. It's a pretty incredible career by anybody's standards, but Smedley's greatest achievement was, was yet to come. And arguably, I'd say it was his most impressive. Um, it's, it's also interesting that Smedley Butler was passed over for his third star for inflammatory statements that he'd made about Benito Mussolini. He became pretty disillusioned um, with the administration after he was criticized and kind of censured. And then he retired because that's what you did back then if you disagreed with your government. But um, anyway, in the early 1930s, at the height of the Great Depression, a, a group of uh, very rich industrialists assembled in, in New York City to discuss the dissolution of America's democracy. And this isn't widely known at all, but remember at the time, the country was in the midst of a, a very high unemployment. The markets had collapsed and, and all of their personal fortunes were evaporating. This wasn't a, uh, an obscure group at all. They included leaders um, like uh, JP Morgan, US Steel, General Motors, Standard Oil, Colgate, Heinz uh, Foods, um, others, Chase National Bank, Goodyear Tire, and, and also names um, like that included the the DuPonts, uh, a former Secretary of State, a former New York governor, as well as Prescott Bush, who was a, a banker then and a, a future Connecticut, Connecticut um, senator, but then also, of course, he was a father to uh, George H.W. Bush. So they decided that their own re only real option to correct things was to take extreme measures to eliminate the, the root cause of the problem, and that to them was the United States government. I am not making this up, by the way. It's it's all true. So, but there's more. Um, so, it, it, they what they did was in order to be able to advance the, uh, their coup and help them in that plot. Uh, these New York businessmen recruited the assistance of Major General Smedley Darlington Butler, Smedley Butler, and uh, here he is. I'll put all these. I'll post all of these. By the way, um, he was then famous, much loved, highly decorated, and and. But by now he was uh, he was pretty jaded. He was a retired Marine. For for this plot uh, to be successful, those conspirators knew that they needed the support of a half a million veterans of World War One. 
um, that bonus army army that I was mentioning, um, preferably under the leadership of General Smedley Butler, to to reshape the government into a more business friendly government that was that was less democratic and more authoritarian. You know, according to the to the plan, FDR and, and the other members of his administration would still be allowed to remain as, as figureheads, but the but the true power would fall to a new cabinet member, and that was to be Smedley Butler. His position had, had kind of a Soviet or you know even fascist sound to it. The Secretary for for General Affairs, through all appearances, Smedley Butler went along with the plot, becoming part of the conspiracy, and. Um, and then in the fall of 1934, right on cue from his, his uh, directors, Smedley sprung into action and made uh, the, the public announcement of, of the coup. And so they assembled this, this, uh, <laughs> this crowd of reporters and they surrounded him. And uh, he started to address the, the nation in a, in a press conference. But to the, to the shock of his fellow conspirators, General Butler did not demand the surrender of the United States government as, as the plan had called for. Instead, he, he related all the details of, of their secret pro-fascist plot and proceeded to, to describe all of the principal players in detail. Um, he said, uh, you know, the upshot of the whole thing was, um, was that uh, I, I, I was supposed to lead an organization of 500,000 men, which would be able to take over the functions of government. Um, so Smedley Butler, as it turned out, had been playing all along um, with the with the ostensible leader of this plot. His name was Gerald McGuire, and and all of the other conspirators, in order to gain more information about it, so he could stop it in its tracks. He even uh, brought in a, a reporter um, and and a, and a few others um, who were playing along with this as well. Um, the plotters had been right about one thing, and that was that Smedley Butler had definitely become disillusioned uh, with, our, with our government, and so they thought that made him a prime candidate to, to lead the effort. But they were dead wrong about his most important quality. He was still absolutely an American patriot and a Marine. Um, Smedley Butler testified before Congress and disclosed all of the, the information that he had collected in his, his small team. Um, his testimony was was fully corroborated by others who had also been approached to participate in it. And of, of course, the the conspirators denied any involvement in the in the plot, calling Smedley Butler's accusations just a, a, a total joke and uh, and a publicity stunt. They even publicly questioned um, the sanity of of General Butler. Um, ultimately, though. Uh, a congressional committee um, investigated it fully and they concluded that there was indeed very compelling evidence of the plot that, um, and, and, and they drafted this, this very comprehensive uh, report describing all of it. Uh, in, a, in a month after the, the congressional report was, was issued, the leader of the conspiracy, Gerald McGuire, remember, died of, of natural causes at the age of 37 years old. So uh, successfully eliminated, you know, the only witness with, with any insights into the entire cabal. So, you know, just imagine that. Um, could, the, could that plot have uh, um, succeeded in overthrowing our government? Who knows? But one thing is absolutely certain, and, and that is that uh, Smedley Butler was responsible for, for stopping it. There are a lot of other uh, details to the story, and, and, uh, and we actually – mention it in our in our uh, last novel, the, the fifth column. Um, don't ever think that it couldn't happen again. I think that that would be a huge mistake. So so here's my question. And, and you know, why isn't Smedley Butler more well known? Two Medals of Honor responsible for stopping a, a large scale coup attempt in the United States against the United States. It's it's beyond me. But I thought you'd like to know.